Hello everyone, I'm Kevin from MRU Studios, and I wanted to create a tutorial video. It's actually a follow-up to another video I hear, have here on my channel that's related to issues when you export a character and clothing and items from Daz Studio into Blender, specifically using the Daz to Blender bridge that's available from Daz 3D. Um, the previous video I did was related to hair on a scalp cap and how the edges of the hair around the scalp cap can some kind cause some blotchy areas and how to fix that using the transparency light path setting in cycles. This video is a follow-up to that, which is going to discuss a different kind of hair that is strand-based hair, something you can create in Daz Studio, but it's related to a product I purchased on the Daz Studio store. And it's we're going to cover how to, there, there's an issue related to how that hair is exported into Blender, or exported from Daz Studio into Blender, and it's a particular setting that can cause a problem. So with that, we have the awesome Commander Cody, who's going to help me demonstrate this particular issue. He's going to be in the upcoming visual novel portrayed by yours truly, coming up here soon on our YouTube channel. Commander, say hello to the wonderful audience. Let's get started. All right, so to get started, we're going to go to Daz Studio. We're going to export Commander Cody, as you saw there. That scene was actually entirely rendered and animated in Blender using Blender's animation tools, which in the future I might do some tutorials on that as well. But uh, we're going to do like we did last time uh, in the previous hair video and just start with Daz Studio. And we're going to bring in Commander Cody and then we're going to export them using the Daz to Blender bridge. Now, while this is getting loaded, I do want to mention the fact that in the last video, I had some uh, viewers comment, why don't you just use Diffeomorphic? And I know that's a tool that's available. Um, it, it's actually older and been around longer than the Daz to Blender bridge. And there were some members or there's some viewers that provided links to the Diffeomorphic and downloading it and those comments were deleted. I just want to let you know that wasn't anything I did. I didn't delete those comments. It was actually YouTube's being very aggressive lately, and I've noticed that anyone who comments on any of my videos, they're, uh, who comments a link on any of my videos, the, the comment is immediately deleted. I want you to know I'm not doing that. There is a way to block links, but it doesn't delete your comment. It just places it in a YouTube studio so that I can review it and either delete it or approve it, which I would approve it, but I don't have links blocked on my videos. So it's YouTube being very aggressive and deleting any comments with links. Okay, so here we have Commander Cody with the outfit loaded. What I'm gonna do now is just go to scripts and I'm gonna to go to Bridges, Blender, Daz to Blender, okay? I like to do subdivision level two because the character just doesn't look great. If I don't, uh, you see a lot of jagged edges around like ears and things like that. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna use level two. Uh, we're gonna collect the textures and remove incompatible nodes. That's what I always use. Now, I do want to make and uh, tell you about morphs. If you use morphs, you have to be very careful I noticed this the other day when I was doing an export. I just thought, okay, I'll export all of the morphs for the character, every possible thing I can put in there, I'll just export that morph. The problem is those morphs are turned into shape keys, I think they're called in Blender, and it massively exponentially increases the size of your saved Blender file if you do that. So what you'll notice is the character alone might be 75, 100 megabytes in size for a Blender file. If you export all of the mo morphs, that'll just blow it up and it could get up to four or five. And I've even seen on the Daz Studio forums or Daz 3D forums that the size of the character, actually uh, the size of some of the save files um, forum members were dealing with was up to 10 gigabytes. So if you're saving backups using the backup method of Blender, it just can eat up your hard drive really fast. 
So I haven't had a need to export these morphs. Um, I'm fine with using the character the way it is. If you do want to export some morphs and you absolutely want to use them in Blender, I would recommend just exporting those morphs and not everything because it doesn't just um, massively increase the size of your Blender file. It makes it almost impossible to work with in Blender because the file is so large because when you do undos in Blender, then what you have is it saves those undos and then reloads them. And if they're gigabytes in size, it just takes forever to reload a do with undo. So I would recommend not exporting morphs unless you absolutely need them. And I don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that and accept. And I do want to make an important no note while this exporter is working. If you want to preview the character in, in the NVIDIA render engine, then I would actually recommend before you use the exporter and say go and accept and use the export script that you that you select another view in your viewport, get out of the NVIDIA render view because what happens is the character is constantly updating and moving. And when you do that in NVIDIA, it's constantly loading the scene into your graphics card and it takes hours for the export script to finish. Where, as you saw here, it's just a few minutes. So either go into the filament view or texture shaded, which is OpenGL, and it'll take just a few minutes, okay? So let's go ahead and open up Blender. So here we are in Blender. I deleted the default cube because we're not gonna need to use it. And if you come over here, you have the DAS to Blender bridge installed, then it'll, it'll show up as your add-ons here. I have some other add-ons, the Mixamo add-on and things, but let's go to the DAS to Blender and we'll just say import Genesis figure. So this is gonna import Commander Cody into Blender. Now, one thing you're gonna see when it gets imported is some of the props, they don't quite line up with where they were in DAS Studio. And that is more or less just a manual process. If you know a way of setting things up in Blender, or I'm, I'm sorry, DAS Studio, so that that export, when it exports, I don't have to do these adjustments, that's great. Um, I, I don't know how to do that. Maybe it has to do with morphs, I don't think so. So you see here, a lot of these pouches and things just did not get set up correctly. So to save time, because this is more or less a uh, hair video, we're just going to delete those things right there. They don't really matter that much. And you notice the cap, the beret is not setting right on his head. Let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, so I kind of did uh, some use some manip I, well, I use some manipulation tools in Blender to get the hat right and just remove the things that um, weren't sitting right on the character. I'll, I'll create another video where I'll talk about how to get that stuff set up and even uh, show how to properly link things to the bones of the character using vertices vertex groups to get things set up right. So. For this, we're going to go into cycles. So let's make sure we've got cycles set up to GPU compute. And let's just move over to cycles and take a look and see what the character looks like. Now, um, so it's not perfect setting on his head, but it's pretty good. It needs a little bit of work around the edges here. But the important part is if you look here, the strand based hair is gone. Where did it go? And it doesn't even show up right in Eevee either. Um, you, you see kind of a little bit of it, but mostly for the most part, it doesn't look like anything like it did in NVIDIA iRay in DAS Studio. Let's go to Eevee and show you too. Okay. So yeah, here in Eevee, it doesn't look great either. So let's go back to cycles. Let's go over to shading. This is where we're going to work with the nodes, the shader nodes that DAS created, DAS Studio created when it exported the character here. So if you zoom in, come over here. If you try to use that transparency setting like you did in the other video, it does make the hair look okay, but you have to go in the opposite direction with it. So if we come over here to cycles, you say, okay, let me go to light paths and I like to put everything to one because according to Blender Guru and, so, Guru and some other YouTube Blender content creators, um, there isn't much of a difference if you make most of these one. Now, before, I'm going to set that to 1. Before, in the other video, we had the transparency set to 20. As you see, that doesn't work. So if we set it to 1, oh, wow, look, the hair looks great, but you come to the front and now your eyelashes are screwed up and even the eye, the surface of the eye, one of the textures that are set up there just looks awful. So 
that's not going to work. So let's set this back to whatever we had at eight or 12, I think it was, that looks pretty good. What you have to do is come over here to your shader node, shader nodes. Here is where we need to select our strand based hair, which right here is under the Genesis mail. And it's going to be this L1 crew cut hair. It has the same name as the product from Daz Studio, which is great. So if you look at this, here are the nodes that we have set up. Okay. And we're getting the textures that we moved in. It's using these textures that were copied from the Daz Studio paths into a export path. And we're using those. That's fine. If you come down to this node, I think which was created a node that was created by the DAS to Blender bridge. If you look down here, go to cutout opacity. You see that a cutout opacity is set to zero. Cutout opacity, basically, if it's set to zero, and this is true anywhere in DAS Studio or anywhere, if the cutout opacity of anything is set to zero, it basically makes it invisible. Now, if you increase that to one, your hair appears. And that's your strand-based hair. And the front, where the character is, the eyelashes are fine. The eye textures are fine too. Now, there's an issue with the eye textures. I don't like when it gets exported by um, when it gets exported by Daz Studio. I don't like those eye textures. There's something I do to fix that to make them different so the eyes look better in cycles. But that will fix it. Uh, I and I don't know why. I have no idea why that would even be set to zero but it is. And this is with strand-based hair. I don't know if there's any other products like that, but if you export a strand-based hair from Daz Studio and you notice that the hair doesn't appear at all, just check your cutout opacity in whatever node that's created by Daz Studio and you should be fine. That was my problem. So like I said, thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. And we're going to be releasing our visual novel very soon, the MRU Chronicles Episode 1. All of the video editing, all of the audio, the episode is completely done. I finished it. I've got all the credits for all the voice actors, actresses that were involved. And I'm just working on some end credit sequences. And check out the trailer video. That first episode is going to drop soon. It's going to come out very soon. And also... Uh, if you're interested in the other hair video I did, which was based on scalp cap based hair and the issues related to that, check out that uh, video link. Check out that video link as well. It'll also be in the description. Maybe that's your issue that will help fix it. It has to do with transparency, tr light, light, light paths, transparency settings. Check out that video if you're interested. If you like the video, please click the like button. Please consider subscribing because it massively helps me continue to do this. I want to I want to help others who are interested in learning and entering the world of 3D animation like I did a year ago to tell their stories. I want to see your stories. I want to see you gain the knowledge and skills necessary to share your stories with the world. It's awesome. I, I'd love to be. Uh, I'd, I'd love to help in that any way I can. So if you got any questions about anything, Daz to Blender Bridge, or maybe some other 3D animation questions, please let me know in the comments section. Give the uh, give the video a, a like. Consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Take care.